name is Dave Esser, and I'll be speaking to you today about the use of force in correctional institutions, and in particular, to the use of force at the Sarnia Jail. The Government of Ontario designates police officers and correctional officers as peace officers. As such, they have been granted authority under the Criminal Code of Canada to use force in the performance of their duties. This gives the police the right to use force to arrest someone and gives correctional officers the right to use force to control those in our jails and correctional institutions. In the last several years, the Ministry of Correctional Services has slowly eroded this right for correctional officers and now views every use of force by an officer as unnecessary and criminal. At this time, after every use of force, no matter how minor, the inmate is asked by management if they wish to lay charges against the correctional officer. If we break up a fight, each inmate is asked if he wants to charge the officers with assault. If an inmate attacks an officer and is subdued, he is asked if he wants to charge the officer with assault. We are told that the only way we are permitted to defend ourselves is to slap the offender. It has now gotten to the point where if we initiate force in order to control the inmate or prevent an assault, then the inmate is free to assault staff because he or she was afraid or we made them angry. So they have the right to use force against us. It's not their fault. Management at the Sarnia Jail has actually gone to the police and to the Crown Attorney on behalf of the inmate and had assault charges dropped because the officer made the inmate angry or afraid by using force. So it really was not the inmate's fault that they assaulted the officer. In August, the Ontario Ombudsman started an investigation into the excessive use of force in correctional institutions in Ontario. The report has not come out yet. However, correctional officers at the Sarnia Jail and across the province have already suffered from the repercussions of this investigation. The Ministry of Correctional Services has panicked. They have hired more managers and designated at least one manager in each institution, but do nothing but investigate the use of force and see if there is some way that an officer might have done something wrong. Officers are assumed guilty in each and every case. As one officer has stated, now if we touch an inmate, we are suspended. It is interesting that those in our charge are assumed to be innocent but correctional officers are not. Inmates in Ontario spend 75 million hours a year in our institutions. I believe the Ombudsman will produce five or six situations in the province where he believes excessive force was used and the situation was not handled correctly. Five or six cases out of 75 million hours of inmates being in our jails. Okay, there's no need to panic. Correctional officers in Ontario are doing an excellent job of keeping the community, staff, and the inmates safe. We do not condone excessive force for any reason. We believe that the sections in the Criminal Code of Canada referring to excessive force applies to everyone. However, we also believe that the right to use force sections apply to everyone as well. The right to use force as a peace officer in the performance of our job is a right we have been given by the Criminal Code of Canada. Correctional officers and police officers don't have less right to use force, we have more right to use force. Sorry. We have to do this so that society can function and operate in an orderly manner. The Ministry of Corrections has taken away our right to use force as an average citizen, and as correctional officers. We demand those rights back. For the use of we, of course, we have five demands that I have sent today to the Minister of Corrections. The Ministry of Correctional Services will no longer encourage, recommend, or suggest to an inmate to charge an officer with assault. The police will not be called unless an officer or inmate asks for them to be called. All restrictions concerning the type of force used be removed except those referring to medical issues. Management and the union, union set up a committee in each institution to deal with use of force issues. 
We want the CISU, which is the Correctional Investigative and Security Unit of Corrections, to be eliminated and investigations run by the SIU through the Attorney General's office with none of the present CISU investigators being used. The Correctional Investigative and Security Unit is a secret police of the ministry. The CISU does not come down and investigate anything. They come down to prosecute and persecute. They drag out investigations as long as possible, some for going more than 18 months. They intimidate, harass, and bully people. The investigation that recently finished at the Sarnia Jail could have been done in a week. It took six months. <coughs> Their division of management and as such are not in any way impartial. We need to get some sense back into the ministry. We are not the enemy. We are just trying to do our jobs. Stop treating us like criminals. I'll give you two examples how the Ministry of Corrections has taken away our rights as correctional officers to defend ourselves and to control inmates in our care. First of all, I'd like to say that in 26 years as a correctional officer, I have never once been accused of excessive force, using excessive force. However, at the end of August last year, I was involved in a minor use of force. An inmate threatened to assault me and then did assault me three times. I defended myself and stopped the assault. The inmate had no injuries whatsoever and yelled for a half an hour after the incident about how little force I had used and mocked me for how little force I had used. The inmate, of course, was asked by management if, if they wanted to lay charges against me. The inmate refused. The police were called, an officer investigated the incident and charged the inmate with an assault on a correctional officer. One week later, I was suspended by the superintendent pending an investigation into excessive use of force on an inmate with no injuries who yelled for a half hour how little force was used. It was three months three months before I was even interviewed. During this time, the CISU investigator and the superintendent tried to get the police to charge me and had the charges against the inmate dropped. They had no case against me, so they had to try and manipulate events so that their case looked better. This was not investigating, of course, this was prosecuting. The ministry determined my guilt the second I hit the inmate in defending myself. At my interview with the investigator, I quoted the Criminal Code of Canada, section 34, 36, and 37, concerning the use of force to defend yourself. The investigator stated on tape that those sections of the Criminal Code are for the public and don't apply to me. The Ministry of Corrections does not believe that I have the right to defend myself. When the inmate threatened to hit me, I immediately grabbed onto the inmate so that I would not be assaulted. The investigator asked if I thought the inmate was going to hit me. The inmate said, I'm going to hit you. Okay, so the, the, the investigator asked if I thought the inmate was going to hit me. He asked if the inmate made any motion to hit me. He stated that I had inflamed the person when I used force to stop an assault against me. For that reason, they could not proceed with charges against the inmate because I made the inmate angry. In other words, I needed to be assaulted before I could use force. This takes us to the second scenario, which actually happened a week before this incident. What happens when you wait for an inmate to hit you? Well, a week before the last event happened, I was involved in another use of force. I was alone inside an inmate area of the jail. There were 15 inmates out in the area with me. I let an inmate who was locked in a cell out into the area so we could see the nurse who was outside the bars with my backup officer. The inmate who was unknown to me is slightly shorter than me and about 300 pounds. He went to the bars, lunged his arms through the bars, and tried to grab the nurse. I moved in to grab him. 
he wheeled around, <clears throat> swung a weapon at me that he had hidden in his clothes and sliced me open underneath my arm. That's what happens when an inmate hits you first. I could have easily lost my eye or my life in this, in this incident. The inmate continued to attack me with a weapon. I was able to prevent any further injury to myself. Within a minute, other staff arrived, entered the area, and took the inmate to the ground. It has been over six months now, and an investigation into this incident has just started. At the present time, I'm not the subject of the investigation. However, every staff member that came into the take the inmate to the floor is under investigation. All four or five people who rushed into the area where 16 inmates were out walking around, took down an inmate who was trying to seriously injure me or kill me, are under investigation for excessive use of force. He ended up, the inmate ended up with two red marks on his face and a small cut on his ear. Injuries consistent with me defending myself and him being taken down to the floor by four or five officers. So these officers, who not fearing for their own safety, came in and possibly saved my life, are under investigation for the minor injuries the inmate received. You wonder what the inmate looked like after the, after the incident? Well, he didn't look like this, okay? Now the CISU is involved again. Officers are being interrogated again. They are being told they are lying. They are bullied. This is an investigation that would take a day by anyone in this room other than our two managers sitting over here. The CISU will take six to 12 months and half a million dollars to do the investigation and the superintendent will fire all the officers because they use force against an inmate. This stupidity has to stop. <clears throat> 